guy. I'm looking forward to hearing it too. <laughs> Stephen Mackey. So I went to Subway the other day and I was lining up and I, uh, I was ordering my roll, but I got to the part, you know that part where you got to pick your cheeses? Because I don't really know my cheeses. I never really learnt it. It's not like there's a school that you can go to that will teach you cheese. I wish there was, but there's not. So I'm looking at them, right, and there's like three different types. And there's like an orange looking cheese. There's a cheese with the holes in it. And like a normal plain cheese, I don't know what you call it. So I said to the guy, I said, I'll go that orange cheese. He said, that's tasty cheese. I said, tasty cheese? You can't just go around claiming it's tasty. I haven't tasted it yet. I'll be the judge if it's tasty, not you. It's, 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 it's a cocky cheese, that's what it is. This is a cocky cheese. It's full of itself. I hate this cheese. I hate you, cheese. And then, then I was looking at the other two cheeses. I felt a little bit sorry for them, I mean, because like, what chance have they got? They're competing against tasty cheese. They never had a chance to begin with, did they? So I said to the guy, I said, okay, that cheese with the holes in it, you know? Like I felt a little bit sorry for it. I, I, uh, I said, uh, it's like the, the kid that never got picked up in the football team. Well, guess what? Cheese with holes in it, today's your lucky day. Because I'm picking you, you're in the team. <laughs> I mean, you're not in the starting squad, you're going to be a sub. <laughs> a six inch sub. That's all right, you made it. <laughs> so, well, I was the time I went to, uh, to the chemist and I uh, was lining up and I give my prescription to the pharmacist. She says to me, she says, would you like the cheap brand or would you like the expensive brand? I didn't know what to say, I got a little bit uncomfortable. I was a little bit insecure, there was people behind me and so I said, I'll have the cheap brand, but I just want you to know, like, like financially, I'm doing okay, you know? <laughs> I mean, I can afford the expensive brand. <laughs> she gave me a weird look. It reminds me, uh, I went, you know that commercial, Frank Walker from National Tiles? No, we always played on the radio. It goes a bit like this. Hello, I'm Frank Walker from National Tiles. We've got so many tiles here for you. Sounds like a fucking constipated break. Yeah. And even to be in national tiles, but can just imagine this guy in your face, wouldn't you be like, no mate, I don't want your tiles. I'm gonna go to Bunnings. I'll keep my tiles from Bunnings. This guy's fucking nuts. Yeah. And they had one similar, um, Chris and Murray's plant farm, I don't know if you can remember that one, it was a commercial and that was a bit like, hi, I'm Chris and I'm Murray. Come to Chris and Murray's plant farm. Hey, if you come today, you may even see me in a pig. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to convince us, isn't it, Murray? Yeah. We're definitely coming now. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say to you, Murray? I'm going to say the same thing I said to Frank, is what I'm saying to you. No, mate, I don't want your plants. I'm going to back the Bunnings again. This guy's fucking nuts. <laughs> I mean, this is why Bunnings is killing it. All his competitors are just fucking the head. You want to tell me something? Just be normal and buy your shit. And that's coming from me. Oh yeah, I was ordering a, a cup of tea from McDonald's, I don't know if anyone's ever done that before, but uh, the reason why is because I went to the doctor, I've been having kidney stones lately, and the doctor said, lay off the coffee, you've been having too much coffee. So I said, alright, I'll go tea then, and I, and I went through the drive through at McDonald's, and I said, oh, can I always have a cup of tea? To the speaker box, and, he, and he said, Sir, I don't understand what you're trying to say. I said, oh, can I have a cup of tea, you know, tea, tea. Sir, I don't understand what you're trying to say. I went, you know, the, the, the bags, man, the bags, tea, how do you not know this is, like with coffee, it's easy, it's cappuccino, latte, they click straight away. With tea, it's like the first time someone's ever ordered a cup of tea, man. I just wanted tea. The, the, the. So this is a breakfast time, if you want lunch, dinner, or tea, it's after 10.30am. <laughs> no, after 10.30, no, not tea as in the eating tea, I mean tea as in the drinking tea, the bags, man, the bags, oh, for fuck's sake, just give me a cup of tea. Oh, I have the kiddies though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Bit of technical difficulties. That's all right, we'll continue on. So, I've been working with this Chinese guy, right? And, and he works a lot, like he works all the overtime. He has two different jobs. So I said to him, I said, 
I said, what do you work so much for? Don't you ever have time for yourself, you know, with your family and friends and, you know, life's not all about work, work, work. You've got to have time for yourself, you know. And he said to me, he said, where I'm from, in my culture, we work hard when we're young, then we buy a house, then we relax. <laughs> and I said, really? Well, where I'm from, Australia, what we do is we buy a touch lottery ticket and we wait and we wait some more and we wait some more and we keep on fucking waiting. And then when we win, then we'll buy a house and then relax. But I can see where you're coming from, very similar cultures. We both want the same thing in the end, so. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you on this one. Um, does everyone know what uh, the game Grand Theft Auto is? Yeah. yeah. You play that? Yeah. If you haven't played it before, I'll just give you a brief rundown. So in this game, you basically, you're, you control a little guy and you go around and uh, you can drive cars, drive planes, you can, you know, there's police in this game, so if you do something wrong, they just uh, go after you. Like, So anyway, I'll just... I was uh, at one of those memorial days and I was speaking to this uh, like veteran and, uh, and he told me this story about the time when one of his mates got shot in, in some conflict, I can't remember which one it was, but, and, and, he, and he basically he saved his life. He, he, he grabbed him right over his shoulder and he got into a safe zone and, he, and he, it was a really inspirational, tough story. He saved his life. And but, uh, after he told me this story, there's this... Like awkward silence between us. Like I don't know. Were you meant to be stirring, sharing stories or some shit? I don't. I don't have anything that can relate to what you just told me. That was a brutal story, man. Like the toughest thing I've done in my life is I've dropped my iPhone and broke the screen. And I didn't even break the front. I broke the back. Nobody gives a fuck about the back. I can't give him that. I've, I've got to. I've got to give him something. And then it clicked. I know what I can give him. I'll give him my Grand Theft Auto story. I mean, on the PlayStation, it's not good, but. He's not going to know, you know, he's old, he's never played a video game before. So I'll give him that, and that's what I did, and I said to him, I said, I said, when I was younger, I had a lot of cops after me, you know, like I did a lot of bad things, like I robbed some cars, I stopped some planes, I did a lot of things I'm not proud of, you know, and I had a lot of cops after me, and, uh, and, I, and I can see in the distance there's this tower, and I thought to myself, like, I'll just climb up that tower, you know, and hide out there, and then I can think about what I'm going to do, you know, like, and I climbed up the tower, and as I got up, you're not going to believe what I've seen. There's a fucking rocket launcher just sitting there. I mean, who's going to leave a rocket launcher just sitting there, fucking man? What the, what the fuck is... And, so, and then these helicopters come out of nowhere and start shooting at me. I'm like, what? And I was looking at the rocket launcher and I said, well, I'll fuck it. Two or two together, I'll grab that rocket launcher. And that's what I did. I, I grabbed it and I, and I fucking blew up the planes and, and the helicopters and fire and spider went everywhere. And, and, and you know that... Once one helicopter's down, there's going to be another one. They know where I am. They're going to keep sending helicopters, so I've got to get the fuck off this tower, you know, like I'm a sitting duck. So what I did was I jumped off the tower. I can see, like, the beach in the horizon, and, and I jumped off the tower, and I pressed, not pressed, this is real life. I, I parachuted all the way down, and I landed on a yacht, and I drove that yacht out to the middle of the ocean, hanged back for, I don't know, a good minute, turned around, and, and they're all gone. All the cops are gone. I mean, I did a lot of shit. Are you meant to tell me I'm a free man after everything I fucking did? <laughs> this can't be true. So well, there's no point in staying out here in the middle of the ocean. I meant to drive back to shore. And I, and I drove back to shore. And as I, as I uh, got off, I, you know, I've lived that crime life for so long. I meant to just be a normal civilian like, like everyone else. And I told that to, to the veteran. And he looked at me and he said, See, I can understand that. These young fellas these days. They don't understand, like we had it hard back in our day. They, they've got it easy. And I said, yeah, no, I agree. They do have it easy. Like we, we had it tough. Like these young fellas these days, they, they treat everything like it's a video game to them. Like they don't understand what we went through. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's all I got for today. <laughs> Stephen Mackey!